Dr. Audio Adventures. The Doctor, Citizen of Gallifrey, Episode 1, written by Adam Brooks. Far off in the universe, in the constellation of Kasturbaris orbiting its star, was the planet Gallifrey with its red and orange coloured surface. Living within the large domed citadel with its cone-like spire, ascending into the sky was the ancient race known as Time Lords. It was the Rassilon era and at that moment two Time Lord Academy students, both of whom appeared to be in their twenties, were standing in a hallway beside a doorway each dressed in their burgundy, purple and mauve-coloured full-body robes, with a shoulder clasp decorated with a Time Lord seal. One was a male, the other was a female. He turned to her. Hey, Thet, do you think we're going to get in big trouble this time? Yeah, but Round we'll get through it. We're best time. friends, after all. Along the hall walked a man who looked to be in his 70s. He was their teacher, dressed in a burgundy-coloured full-body robe and mauve-coloured shoulder pads decorated with the Time Lord seal and a cap on his head. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to have to ban you from travelling in time and space like the others today. You can't ban us. We were so excited I hardly slept last night. Yeah, it's not fair. Can't we make it up somehow? No. Now let's go inside and you will remain seated in class until all the others are finished. Then, the door slid open... The classroom filled with eight Time Lord Academy students, all of whom appeared to be in their twenties, each dressed in their coloured full-body robes with a shoulder clasp, decorated with a Time Lord seal. In walked the trio. The teacher stood near the doorway for a moment as the two went and sat down. All right, class. Looks like we're all ready to go now. Eight of the students stood up. All right. Please follow me. A male in a dark green and mustard-coloured robe turned to the lady, still in her seat. Hey, Thea Sigma. Can't you go now? What? No, we've been banned. A female in a blue and purple robe turned to her. Guess you're not Time Lord material after all, seat. Why? <laughs> she stood up aggressively. The young man sitting next to her held her back by the arm. Let it go, Thea. The students filed out of the classroom door into the hall. You know, we should follow them and go anyway. Yeah, let's go. The two exited the room. The teacher led the students down the hallway and they passed several doorways in the hall. Then the hall bent, sending them around a corner. The hall opened up into a large area that made a wide junction with two other hallways. The teacher directed the students down the hallway on the right. They passed by several more doorways along this hall until the teacher stopped. The door he had come to slid open. And the students filed into the room. They saw five grey cylindrical time capsules, and to the side was a box on the small table. These are the specially customised Type 40 TT capsules, or time capsules. Now, everyone, partner up, and each pair come up to the box and get a coordinate device, each with a randomly generated set of coordinates and an energon crystal capable of giving two trips through the time and space vortex only. Each pair made their way up to the box, taking a small spherical device that glowed with a Gallifreyan symbol at its centre, and a thin rectangular opaque white crystal. After each pair had both, they all walked up to the time capsules. Now, each of the pairs enter their capsule, journey to the coordinates and make a report. Then return with your report chips to me. With this, the teacher left, and all the time capsule doors slid open, and each pair made their way through the doorway into their capsule. The teacher walked back through the hallway, not noticing the two hiding in a room on the opposite side. This is our chance, let's go! The two snuck into the room and four of the capsules dematerialised before the pair's eyes. Look, there's still a coordinate sphere and an energon crystal. She took the crystal as he took the sphere. With them, they walked up to the capsule. Its door slid open and the pair made their way inside. On the inside was a brightly lit, half-dome-shaped room that had a white base and a creamy cross and a diamond pattern on its walls. It was a room much too big to fit inside of the small capsule they had entered. There was a doorway on the other side of the room and a stairwell to one side of it that led underneath the floor. In the middle of a room was a hexagonal-based control console. In its centre, a cylindrical glass tube that rose up into the ceiling. This housed more than a dozen rotor couplings, which were holding long cylindrical lights. Wow. It's so beautiful, isn't it? You say that, though this is an obsolete piece of junk now. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, my friend, and I like the appeal of antiques. 
Well, that's you and I in a nutshell. You always see the beauty in everything. That's what's made us friends, I guess. The two walked up to the control console and the doors closed behind them. Each of the six panels had a different set of gauges, switches and buttons. One of the panels was covered. Let's see what we have here. The man lifted the cover, revealing a monitor, which immediately turned on and displayed the room from which they'd just come. Underneath were two special fixture holes in the panel. Seems this is where the crystal goes. She placed the crystalline tip into the thin slip. Now we place in the coordinate sphere. First off, I've got to activate it. So all I've got to do is press this button and... With this, a small ball opened in a small hole and a light shone through. He placed the sphere in its half-spherical fixture and the rotors began to move up and down. In the room, the capsule dematerialised, drawing the ship into a time and space vortex, taking them off into a different corner of the universe and different points in time. The rotors in the ship continued to move as the ship continued its journey through the time vortex that encompassed the grey shell of the ship, until eventually it rematerialised again in their new location and time. Looks like we've arrived. wonder where we are. Well, let's have a look. The male Time Lord began turning the monitor toward them, but his friend, the female Time Lord, stopped him. I don't want to see it with that. I want to experience it with my own eyes. She flicked a switch which opened the doors. The ship had landed at night on the sidewalk in a street with several dimly lit houses along it. The exterior of the ship slowly changed into an early oil street lamp, and then the back panel opened and the two walked out into the cool night air. We continue with the next story. Formed by an all-volunteer cast featuring Rowena Dinsmore, Brooke Maloney, Michael Rutter, Royce Scale, Bill Kahn, Adam Brooks, John Brooks. Edited by Adam Brooks, Carolyn Rutter, and Trevor Sneed. Visit the Doctor Audio Adventures. WordPress. Com for full sound effects, credits, artwork, and more. City Park Radio, the Doctor Audio Adventures, 2016.